Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's Kyle Henderson, BamaInsider.com, coming to you from beautiful Tuscaloosa, Alabama. I'm actually outside of the Malmore practice facility down here in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. So you, you can probably hear the background noise of the cars going by or the students pulling in and out or the, the student buses rolling through. Alabama has a basketball game tonight. You can catch more of that action on BamaInsider.com. Stay tuned for the game story and the Nate Oates press conference as Alabama looks for their first victory of the season. As you know, they lost to Penn last week but i'm not here to talk about basketball i'm here to talk about football and the loss to lsu and kind of put things into perspective now that we've had a couple days to really think about it let the loss settle in and it looks like there's still plenty of life left for alabama now i think originally going into that game i think a lot of people felt that it was a must win for alabama right everyone was like they gotta win this game in order to reach the sec championship they gotta win this game because their schedule of strength there's doesn't cut it you know who have they beaten have they Texas A&M is the only real win they can hang on to and then on Sunday I felt a little bit better about Alabama's chances now I'm feeling a lot better because I think with the AP and the coaches voting Alabama number four like I said on the message boards like I said on the YouTube channel what that means is that the pollsters and the coaches who vote in the coaches poll respect Alabama's loss more than they respect Georgia's loss to South Carolina. I mean, it's not complicated. Alabama lost to the number one team by five points. Georgia lost at home to South Carolina. I mean, that's a terrible loss. And I think no matter, you know, I I get it. Georgia beat Notre Dame and Florida when both of those two teams were ranked in the top 10. They're not top 10 teams, obviously. I never thought they were to begin with. But they are wins against top 10 teams. So I think this bodes really well for Alabama because now we know exactly what Alabama has to do. Just win. It's the same thing they had to do before this game. Just win. And I think if they do that, they beat Mississippi State. Nick Nick Saban said that that's going to be challenging. It always is challenging going to Stark Vegas. That place is the loudest stadium in the SEC, in my opinion. Those cowbells, oh, my goodness. I'm taking my headphones and my earbuds because that stadium just does not stop the cowbells ring constantly so i think with the fact that alabama has mississippi state you can't you know you got to move forward from this game you got to accept that you lost accept it move forward you lost to lsu you played a lot better in the second half you outplayed lsu in the second half can you meet lsu again who knows you can't even worry about that stuff because that's all hypothetical what's realistic is alabama versus mississippi state this week and alabama is a 21 point favorite alabama has to go out take care of business play a complete football game i think nick saban said something very interesting during today's press conference said a, he always says something interesting right i mean everything he says out of you know the greatest college football coach in history is interesting we could break down every single segment of what he says because it's interesting but he said that tua had no further issues after that game he played a you know the complete game against lsu he was taken down a few times but no further injuries so that's great news for alabama going forward because you're going to need a healthy tua tunga bailoa every single weekend but especially when alabama takes on auburn here in a couple weeks right can't look past anybody but it is what it is he has to be on point and ready to go for that auburn matchup there after thanksgiving so i thought that was really key because it's a big important note he wasn't 100 percent obviously but he played like a warrior did a great job 418 yards passing that big touch at the end really is going to save alabama in my opinion and when we jump back and talk about the playoff LSU number one, Ohio State number two. Now, Ohio State, it's not its not like a lock that either LSU or Ohio State is going to grab that one or two bid. There's still plenty of football left. I mean, I mean, can you imagine if Georgia was to beat LSU in the SEC title game? I mean, that would almost certainly knock out Alabama, right? Unless somehow Ohio State was to lose too. Now, Ohio State still has Penn State to play. I know Penn State lost to Minnesota, but the Big Ten on any given Saturday, who knows what's going to go on. Ohio State still has to play their nemesis, Michigan, and I don't think anyone that's listening to this probably takes Michigan serious, but, you know, it's a rivalry game, and you know how rivalry games are. You throw the records out the window, and it just kind of plays it out how it's going to play out, and usually those games are wacky, so... 
it's not like Ohio State is a lock. I think they're a great football team. I think they're a very complete football team. Justin Fields balling out. Uh, same with Joe Burrow. So those two teams certainly in. And then you got Clemson. And who's Clemson going to play, you know, before uh, the playoffs? Really nobody. I mean, Wake Forest and South Carolina could be tricky teams for Clemson, right? I mean, South Carolina beat Georgia, right? Georgia's definitely a better football team than Clemson. Or are they? I mean, the AP and coaches poll actually have Clemson third, so maybe that maybe I'm wrong about that. I don't know. What do you think? Is Georgia a better team than Clemson? Sound off in the comment box. Uh, then you have other teams that we've talked about in the past, you know, the past couple days. You talk about uh, Oregon. We've already talked about that. Oregon, uh, they probably win the Pac-12, and then their only loss is to Auburn. Well, if Alabama beats Auburn, then, you know, that should count for something because I think without a doubt Alabama would win the Pac-12 or the second team. The Pac-12 just is not <laughs> nothing compared to the SEC, all right? I'm not an SEC homer. I'm not even from SEC country. I'm just calling it like everybody else is calling it. I mean, the SEC is where power football is. Um, so, you know, it's not over. My point is it's not over for the Alabama Crimson Tide when you look at the bigger perspective. And like Nick Saban said the other night, they've been here before. Things worked out. They didn't win uh, the SEC championship one year before, and they actually won the national championship. That was uh, the first season I moved here in 2017. That was when they beat Georgia, who actually won the SEC championship. So that was that was really strange to see. Didn't even have to go to the SEC championship, had all that time to rest, and then came out, balled out, won the national title game as well as the Sugar Bowl against Clemson. So a lot of football left. Don't panic if you're out there trying to figure out what's going on. Another scenario that I saw, <laughs> it was a, this was on ESPN when I typed in bowl projections, is Alabama not making the playoffs and being inserted into the Sugar Bowl against who? Against who? Guess who? <laughs> Jalen Hurts and the Oklahoma Sooners. Can you imagine the headlines? Should Tua Tungvaloa and Jalen meet? It's like those two are almost destined to meet, right? It's like the, like the world is forcing Jalen and Tua to somehow meet once again. And I can't even imagine if those two were to meet on a bowl game. I mean, that would be uh, that would be marvelous from a media perspective because, you know, we have something to talk about for weeks and weeks and weeks, and we'd sensationalize it, of course. <laughs> but it would be great to see those two finally have one last chance to play each other and almost kind of settle it on the field because I think when Jalen Hurts left Tuscaloosa, I, th I think in my opinion at least, I think he left feeling that he could still quarterback this team. I think he feels that, you know, th this was the team that he worked for. And he left. He left like a grown man. He didn't complain. He didn't say anything salty. He didn't throw any shade at Alabama. He never has. Classy kid. But I think he still feels that he could have led this football team. Do I agree with that? Well, maybe that's a podcast for another time. But I do respect Jalen Hurts and everything that he has brought to college football because I think it's been remarkable the way that he has demonstrated his his play. Uh, I think he's a great mentor for the youth. So, um, you know, having Jalen and Tua in the Sugar Bowl would be uh, pretty special. How about the play of Najee Harris? Najee Harris completely balled out against LSU. I thought there were two big time running backs on the field. Clyde Edwards Alaire for LSU, told you, said it again, it's gonna be a problem for Alabama. He was a problem, 200 all purpose yards. Najee Harris felt that they should have used him more in the game plan against LSU from the start, maybe to have him settle things down, control the time of possession. 91 total yards in the third quarter when Alabama started utilizing him. This kid can catch the ball out of the backfield. 6'2", 230 pounds, he can make you miss. Scored a big touchdown. Scored a one-yard touchdown run, caught that big touchdown. So, big game for Najee Harris. I think he's really playing like the Najee Harris that we are all waiting for when he first arrived at Tuscaloosa. He's certainly going to the NFL. Brian Robinson, is, does it, is it me or does it, sound, does it seem like Brian Robinson is trending downward right now? Seems like he's almost slow, right? Maybe he's just a power back, and it is what it is. I, he is a power back, but I mean, at least you know, get get five yards. You know, put your put your head down and just uh, work with what you got. I don't know. I'd like to see more production out of Brian Robinson. Great kid. I just like to see more production out of him. Um, too many drops on the offensive side. Completely unacceptable. This uh, this wide receiving core, which is made up of. Currently, three juniors that will soon be in the NFL. Too many drop passes. 
He should not be dropping passes. I mean, these guys are pretty much seniors, and uh, they're playing like sometimes freshmen and sophomores when they're making these mistakes. I mean, you cannot be dropping passes like this at this level. And uh, really disappointed to see those those passes being dropped. The same thing when they played Clemson. I don't know if these guys are getting big game jitters or what's going on, but it's a it's a it's a problem that needs to be addressed. These guys need to buckle up, catch the football, and uh, solve this problem because it, it's hurt Alabama a couple times. I thought off the offensive line, um, you know, they did all right. I thought Evan Neal got beat a couple times. There was a screenplay, though, where Evan Neal was 35 yards upfield blocking fools for Najee Harris. I mean, that man is six foot seven, 360 pounds, and he's running downfield. So, you know, I think he's got a long way to go, but, um, you know, he's certainly a good one. Hey, how about this? Do you guys think that Landon Dickerson is going to go to the NFL? Sign off in the comment box. You think, uh, you think he's going to come back? Because I was thinking about it. You could have potentially... Evan Neal come back. Oh, he's obviously going to come back. He's only a freshman. Then you could have Landon Dickerson. And then you could have Deontay Brown. I don't know if Deontay Brown is NFL ready. So you really have three of your most important interior linemen returning next season, which I think is vital for Alabama, considering that everybody else is headed to the NFL, right? I don't know. I was just thinking about that. Judge Quills and Alex Otherwood certainly going to be gone. Talking about the defense now. I mean, the defense, ugh. 25 missed tackles according to Nick Saban 25 missed tackles and I, I tweeted that out and someone was like on on one play yeah yeah there was a lot of missed tackles these guys had a really tough time wrapping up LSU's very elusive Clyde Edwards Lair the big wide receivers couldn't even get down Joe Burrow I mean they, they had pressure we talked about it they had five sacks seven quarterback hurries but Joe Burrow was able to display an incredible amount of escapability several times and continue to step up the pocket, make people miss, get first downs, extend plays, extend drives. I thought Joe Burrow, and we like like we talked about it before, he wrapped up the Heisman. I just sent it to from New York right to Joe Burrow's address. He he dueled out to a tongue of Iloa for the Heisman. Hey, that's how, that's how it is, you know. Big time players rise up in big time games and make big time plays, and Joe Burrow did just that. Um, LSU, that's a great football team. Ed Orgeron, he did a great job. You know, a lot of people are complaining about his comments after the game. I mean, come on, who cares? I mean, he, he's a, he's full of emotion. He, he's worked years and years for this. He probably got a contract extension just by winning that. Does he own Brian Denny Stadium? No, come on. He doesn't own Brian Denny Stadium. He, he doesn't even own Tiger Stadium when you compare it to Alabama. When's the last time he beat Alabama at the Tiger Stadium? Get what I'm saying? It's a recruiting tool. He, he's fired up. He, he's a good, you know, overall he's a good guy, but competitor and come on. We don't know what's being said in Alabama's locker room. This is a day and age where every single thing you do is recorded. So he probably didn't even know that this was being recorded. I'm not defending him. I'm just saying get past it. These are, these are competitors. Competitors want to win. You play to win the game, right? You don't play to tie. <laughs> We've heard that before. You play to win the game. So move on and get better and beat them next time because I feel that there will be a next time between Alabama and LSU, whether it's next year or later on this season. I do feel that these two teams have a date later on, and that date will be December 28th in Atlanta, Georgia, for the Peach Bowl, which will be a playoff between these two teams. I, I just, I think that the, these two teams are going to meet again. I really do. I think when the playoff committee comes together, and they determine which four teams are best. They, their job is to, to put the best four teams in the playoffs. Not the four most deserving, but not the teams that have the trophies. Because the conference championships, as you know, are not all equal. That's deserving. The best teams are the best teams. Ohio State, one of the best teams. LSU, one of the best teams. Clemson, one of the best teams. Alabama, one of the best teams, period. Alabama's better than Oregon. They're better than Utah. They're better than Oklahoma. They're better than Baylor. They're better than Penn State. They're better than Minnesota. They're better than Wisconsin. They're better than Florida, right? They're better than Clemson. Are they better than Ohio State? I don't know. Are they better than LSU? Well, that, that was already settled. But the college football playoff wants the four best. Alabama is certainly one of the four best. Let me know what you think in the comment box now that you've seen the coaches in the AP poll. I'd be curious to get your thoughts. 
So here's the schedule for the rest of the day. I'm just waiting outside. We got practice here in a few minutes. I'm gonna go uh, check out Alabama. Nick Saban said that they're gonna give Tua Tonga Valoa off today and then get him back in on uh, Tuesday and Wednesday so he can really get going. Uh, you got practice highlights coming on later on today. You got uh, player interviews on Tuesday. You got more practice highlights coming Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, Thursday, we'll do the call-in show from Voodoo Wings. And then, um, you know, Friday will be mostly recruiting on BamaInsider.com with Andrew Bone. And then Saturday, Tony Sukalis and I will be on our way to Stark Vegas as Alabama takes on Mississippi State in a sea of cowbells. Hit me up on email, Kyle at BamaInsider.com. I appreciate the feedback. Follow me on Twitter, Rivals underscore Kyle. Um, everything on BamaInsider.com. Become a member of premium. Uh, become a member of BamaInsider.com. What are you waiting for? Why are you out there just like wondering what's going on behind the premium paywall? There's a ton of stuff that's going on that you don't even know about. So go onto the website, hit the sign up button. When you subscribe, the promo code is Roll Tide together. Roll Tide is the promo code. All right. Hit me up, Kyle at BamaInsider.com. If you can't figure it out, I help you do. I walk you through it. All right. I'll be a customer service guy. I'm coming to you from beautiful Tuscaloosa, Alabama. I'll catch you guys soon on BamaInsider.com. Have a great day. Be good, good to each other. Happy Veterans Day. Sincerely appreciate what our men and women in service uniform do for our great country, past or present. Thank you so much for defending this great nation. I'll, I'll catch up with you guys soon. Kyle Henderson signing off.